good evening, Victory Baptist Church. We are back for Wednesday night church, and we're thankful for the goodness of God. Tonight, I'm going to uh, continue uh, that message series that we uh, kind of started last Wednesday, and we're going to keep right on in with that here tonight in tonight's message. In, uh, in turning your Bibles to the book of Acts, chapter number 16, we're going to look again at the Christian's response to adversity. The Christian's response to adversity. And so, as we, uh, as we had mentioned uh, on Wednesday, uh, last Wednesday, uh, about the Christian's response to adversity, we were in James chapter number 1, and we talked about how that James uh, was addressing these Christians who were suffering, and he was kind of preaching uh, to them, giving them a message of hope uh, from the Lord. And so this week, we want to uh, go into Acts chapter number 16, and we'll read about another situation that was set before us. Now, uh, while you're uh, turning there and getting everything uh, ready there in your home for home church, online church, however you want to uh, call it, uh, just want to, again, praise the Lord for uh, your continued support and giving uh, to the ministry here. And we're thankful for that. The ministry's got to keep going on. We've been helping people. We've been, uh, as, as we find out about situations uh, where people uh, need food or an electric bill paid or something like that, we've been trying to be a blessing uh, to our church family number one, uh, and then to others where we can. And so uh, praise the Lord for your giving. Again, want to mention that online giving option. If you go to victorychurchhanover.org, that's victorychurchhanover.org, and you click on the online giving tab at the top of the page, it'll walk you through that very secure uh, way to give online. Uh, you can always just mail mail them, or on Sundays, you know, you can drop them off. And so... Uh, Anyhow, just want to continue to encourage you to do that. Moms and dads, uh, make sure you uh, share with your kids the, uh, the junior church uh, that's going on, uh, the junior church online uh, that Brother Tony and Brother Matt are putting out. Those videos are good. Uh, they've got great information. Uh, they're funny. They're, they're just uh, they're really helpful to our young people. Keep your kids involved. You've got to keep them uh, intact with this stuff, not just with, okay, kids, it's time for Sunday night church or, you you know, uh, Wednesday night church, let's sit down and do this, but get them involved and sit and watch with them if you can and ask questions afterwards and try to keep their minds thinking about the good things of God, okay? Uh, you know, we look at our kids as just say, well, you don't have nothing to worry about and they're, no, they worry. They worry when you worry. They, they get upset when you get upset. They might not show it the way you do, but, but they're concerned too. And so take some time. Grandmas, grandpas, aunts, uncles, you know, how, however you can be an encouragement to the young people, uh, do that. And I know God is going to be a blessing to you. So let's look at this uh, here tonight. Acts chapter number 16. Uh, here is the, the Christian's response to adversity. Uh, and uh, we're going to look at the life of, of Paul and Silas here tonight. Uh, the Bible says uh, that, there was a, uh, that there was a demonic girl that they had, that they had cured uh, through the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. They had cast out that devil. She was healed. She was saved. And now her uh, handlers, if you will, weren't making any profit off of her. And so they got mad at Paul and Silas and got them thrown into jail and got them thrown into the inner part of the prison. That's in verse number 23. Now let's look at what the Bible says in verse number 24. The Bible says that he thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. And so they are immobilized, if you will. Uh, they, are, they are stopped dead in their tracks. They put their feet in the stocks. And so when you look at this, think, think about it like this. The gospel was moving on with their feet. The Bible mentions in the book of Romans that, that beautiful are the feet of them that carry the, uh, carry the gospel. And so in case you're wondering tonight, these feet uh, are some beautiful things. Okay, You didn't think I'd get my foot that high, did you? I could get it a whole lot higher, but I won't. Uh, but these feet are beautiful. Now, now here's, what he, here's the picture. The picture is the gospel is marching on, but now the gospel stopped. You know what? Maybe some might think that the gospel message has stopped right now. 
because of all this virus and quarantine. But you, you listen to me, brother and sister. The gospel of Jesus Christ will never be stopped. It'll continue to go until that trumpet sounds, and then he takes his church out. And then even after that, until the very end of time, the Bible teaches us that he'll always have a witness or an angel preaching the everlasting gospel, going through heaven, shouting the gospel out. There's always going to be the gospel of Jesus Christ until we get to heaven. I thank the Lord for that. But the Bible says the enemy tried to put their feet fast in the stocks, tried to stop the gospel, tried to stop the good things of God. The Bible says in verse number 25, these preachers didn't sit around and pout and whine and complain about all that. No, the Bible says they, at midnight, the Bible says Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them, and suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bands were loosed. And the keepers of the prison awakened out of his sleep, and, uh, and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and, and, and would have killed himself. Suppose that the prisoners had fled. He was going to take his own life. He came to a place of desperation where he thought that in, it would be better for him just kill myself now than to face all the shame and the public humiliation and then the public execution that was going to happen to me later because I let them escape. Verse number 28, but Paul cried with a loud voice saying, do thyself no harm for we are all here. Imagine that. Imagine a Christian. Imagine this individual who, who was put in prison. And instead of wanting his captor to, oh, yeah, go ahead, man, off yourself. He said, don't, don't hurt yourself, friend. Don't hurt. Can you see the response? We're going to talk about the Christian's response to adversity. But do you see that? You see how the kindness and the compassion that, that was in his heart, he cried out, no, don't, don't do that. Don't take your life. You know why Paul said that? Because he knew that if that man killed himself, not being saved, he'd die and go to hell. He didn't, he didn't want his captors to go to hell. He didn't want his, his accuser and his persecutor to go to hell. The Bible says he called for a light and sprang in and came in trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and says, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Then Jesus, or then they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved in thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord and all that were in his house. The Bible says he took them uh, the hour of the night and washed their stripes and was baptized, he and all his house uh, and all his straightway. Boy, this is, a, this is an awesome story. This is a great account of how God did some amazing things in the life of this Philippian jailer. Not just him, but his children and his wife, all of his house came to the Lord Jesus Christ. They preached, they heard the gospel, they got saved, they got baptized. First members of the Philippian Baptist Church right there, uh, whatever. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for what God can do. Let's pray. Father, we love you tonight. We ask for your blessing. We ask for you to speak to hearts in a mighty way. Lord, you know the needs of your people, and you know what it is that we need tonight. Lord, I'm asking for your blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, as I mentioned last week, we're talking about the Christian's response to adversity. Now, now again, uh, the way that we respond, our speech, our conduct, our thinking, what's in our heart, all of that is a reflection of our Christian uh, well-being, our Christian health, our spiritual health. And so if we are healthy in the Lord, that is, if we have a good relationship with Christ, everything's good, we're strong spiritually, when adversity comes, we're going to respond spiritually. But if we're not, if, we, if we're not responding to adversity, the way that we learned last week and the way that we're going to learn this week, then there's something wrong with our spiritual health. And so we don't want to admit that. Nobody wants to admit that. But it's through the hard times and the trials that really bring out our true character. And so we want to look at this tonight, and, and not, just, not just in the, this COVID-19 business, not just how I'm responding to this, but I'm saying, how do you respond to your children? How do you respond to your spouse? How do you respond to your employer? How do you respond to negative news or bad news or how, all of that? Whether we get depressed, whether we stay on top of our game, whether we just crawl in a corner somewhere and just kind of hide your head till it's all over, whether we get mad and we yell and we, whatever the case might be, how do we respond? It really is an indicator of what's going on on the inside. Now, now the outside is not going to be right until we fix the inside. 
And that's what God wants us to do. When problems come, when adversity comes. Listen, everybody handles adversity different. But God's people should be handling adversity in a Christ-like manner. And that's what we want to talk about because uh, that's really going to help us as we, as we move forward. Now, I want to look at this passage of Scripture and just look at a couple things that I believe the Lord is doing here in, in these fellows and how it can be a blessing to us. Okay, how do we respond to adversity? Well, the first thing that we see here in verse number 25 is what? Praise. The Bible says uh, that they had uh, prayed and sang praises. So, so here we see that they were praying. They took it to God in prayer. Not, well, I'll just wait till it, it ends, or I'll just, I'll just figure something out, or I'll just, I'll just kind of just sit around. and, and No, they prayed. They were proactive. You say, well, uh, prayer's not really doing anything. Are you kidding? You, you mean getting the great God of the universe in on your situation? isn't doing anything, I think that's the greatest thing you can do. I, listen, it, it troubles me, and, and I, know what, I know what people are saying, and I've been guilty of saying it too. When the situation gets tough, you say, well, I guess all we can do now is pray. What do you mean all we can do? I mean, that's the great thing that we can do is pray that we can go and beseech our Heavenly Father and the one that created us, the one that created the world, the one that gave us salvation. We can go to him and say, Father, I need your help on this thing. And give it to God. Listen, they prayed and then they praised, the Bible says. I, I say this, nothing in the Bible is by mistake. And, it, and it's not by mistake that the prayer comes before the praise. Because I'm going to tell you something. When you start praying and you start talking to God and you start worshiping him in your prayer time and just thanking him for what he's done and you go give that burden to him and you cast your care upon him for he careth for you. I'm going to tell you what, there's been many times that my prayer time has become a praise time and that my prayer turned into praise and a song is in my heart. I'm thankful uh, tonight that we serve a God who hears our prayers and who gives us something to praise him about. And that's what the Bible says. They started praising him. They started, to, they started to thank him and give glory to him. Now, now we look at this situation and we say, no, I, just, I just can't understand. I just can't understand. I mean, here they were preachers of the gospel uh, and their feet are in the, in the stocks. They can't go anywhere. They can't travel and give the gospel out. But wait a minute. The Bible says there were people right there in that jail cell that needed saved. There were people right there that needed to hear the gospel. They needed to hear something. Now, I don't know what, the other, what happened to the other prisoners. We don't know about them. But here's what we do know. That guard out there, he heard something. And, and he knew enough. Now, listen carefully to this. I thought about this today. He knew enough to say to them when he, when he came in. Look at what the Bible says in verse number 30. Sirs, what, what must I do to be saved? How in the world did that pagan know anything about salvation? How did that pagan Roman soldier who was an idol worshiper and a false god worshiper and, and a candle lighter and a little, you know, idol, idol prayer, how, how did he know that he needed to be saved? There was enough in Paul and Silas's prayers and there was enough in their singing and their praising for that man to hear the gospel. My friend, listen, our prayers and our praise ought to be giving Christ glory. And that's how they knew. That's how that man knew. Sirs, what must I do to be saved? I mean, how did, how did he know? He knew because of what they've been singing about. That's why I, I don't think you can replace the old hymns of the faith. Our hymns that we sing, oh, I know the modern church today, boy, they don't, you know, oh, them old hymns, well, they're just dry and dusty. Them old hymns have got more power. In, listen, you can take one line of an old hymn, uh, like Amazing Grace or Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus, you can take one line of that and have more spiritual power in a handful of a lot of this new modern junk that's coming out today. Listen, friend, it's not just about moving your foot and tapping your foot and feeling good about yourself. It's about worshiping the great God of creation. And here in this passage of Scripture, there was enough doctrine. There was enough theology in their singing and in their praising to bring joy to this man to the point where he said, I need to be saved. God convicted him. God convicted him. I ask you, how are you going to respond to adversity? How are you going to respond to adversity? 
You, you see, they didn't, they didn't stop. They didn't stop. They prayed. They praised. And then look at what, look at what else happened. The Bible says, this, this man came and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And then look at verse number 31. You know what happened in verse number 31? Oh, you say, well, he said, uh, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, now shall be saved. No, 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 hold on. Verse 31. They got back to work. That's what happened. They got back to work. <laughs> you see, their, their gospel feet, so to speak, had been put in the stocks. They were stopped in carrying the gospel. But God says, no, I haven't stopped you. I've relocated you so that you could get the gospel to that prisoner, or to that guard. How else in the world would Paul and Silas been able to minister to that guard? You tell me. You tell me. God, through a negative situation, brought them to that place where now they could minister. You know how many people I've witnessed to in a, in a doctor's office or, or, or the hospital last year when I was in the hospital? Listen, any situation you're in, you're there, friend. Listen, you might be there because of your health or your the dentist or the whatever, but you're a child of God. You are a carrier of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so even though th stuff is going on, you know how we respond? We respond to, I must continue my mission. I must keep going. I, I didn't hear the trumpet sound yet, so I I'm still here. I haven't been raptured out yet. I've got to keep going. The attitude of a child of God when it comes to responding to adversity is I'm going to pray, I'm going to praise, and I'm going to continue my mission of winning souls. Listen, Paul believed this so much. Turn to Acts chapter number 20. Let, let, me, let me show you this real quick. This just wasn't a one-time deal with Paul. Listen, this was something he truly believed with all of his heart. Because later on, when he was about ready to set sail and go to Rome, and, and, and he would be put in prison and eventually killed, he would never see these, these people again. And he told these elders at Ephesus, here in Acts chapter number 20, watch what he says. I, I like this, and I'm just going to, we're going to fast forward a little bit to verse number 22. He says, uh, and now, behold, I go bound in the Spirit to Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there, save that the Holy Ghost witnesseth in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me, but none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy, and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus, to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Wow. You know what he said right here? Here's, here's what Paul said. When he, when he was faced with this unknown situation, here's, here's what he says. I'm not going to fear the unknown. I'm not going to fear the unknown. I don't know what's going to befall me there. I, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, but I'm not going to fear it. I'm not going to fear it because I'm a child of God. Look at what else he says. Not only am I going to fear not fear the unknown, but I'm not going to fear the known. Look at, look at what it says in verse number 22. He says, I don't know what's going to befall me there. And then he says in verse number 23, save the Holy Spirit, witness it in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. He says, here's what I do know. I do know that the Holy Spirit is going to witness in every city, and I'm, and I'm going to be in prison, I'm going to be in bonds and affliction. So he knew that whatever was coming, it wasn't going to be pleasant. So he didn't let the unknown bother him, and he didn't let what he knew bother him. He didn't let that. Listen, he had confidence in God. He's responding to this problem like a child of God. And then he says, none of these things move me. The idea that word move me means to redirect my course. Listen, he could have at any time recanted his faith and said, you know what, I'm done with this. Hey, fellas, uh, I was just kidding about all that Jesus stuff. Uh, no, I'm really not uh, on Jesus' side. Uh, why don't you just let me loose here, fellas, and I'll go back to being a Pharisee. He said, I'm not going to be redirected. He said, there's nothing that's going to stop me or deter me from completing my mission. God has a job for me to do. Listen, he was praising God back in that prison, and now he's praising God as he's in affliction because he knows that wherever he's taken, he's still got a job to do. And Christian, listen, we have purpose until Jesus calls us home. And how we respond to this, what are we thinking? What's in our heart? What are we feeling? 
Don't get down and depressed and say, well, I'm just going to, I guess we can't do nothing now. Well, we can't do it like we have been doing it, but we can still do it. Let's do it. <laughs> Amen. Don't give up. Don't give up. Listen, he says, I'm not going to fear the unknown. I'm not going to fear the known. I, I, I'm not going to let anything to, to stop me or, de, or deter me from completing my mission. And then watch this. Boy, I like this. He says, I've accepted what God has for me. I, I've accepted what God has for me. He says, I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm going to be led of the Spirit. And the Spirit's going to show me what I need to do. Wow. That's an amazing thought. He says, I'm going to keep on my course. And what was that course? It was the gospel of the grace of Jesus Christ. Listen, he says, I've got a job to do, and I accept whatever God has for me. It's a picture of Jesus as Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane praying, Father, not my will be done, but thine be done. Jesus prayed and, and said, you know, if, if we can do this some other way, if there's any other way, let this cup pass for me. But if not, Lord, I'm going to do whatever you want me to do. Total submission to God. And the child of God, listen, when we respond to adversity, if we will give of ourselves to God, God's going to make a way. God's going to make a way. Hey, listen, we all got to die somehow. <laughs> you know, you say, preacher, I don't really like that. I don't like to. Th well, I mean, it's the truth. We all got to die somehow. Would we rather die hiding in a closet somewhere? Or would we rather die praising the name and preaching the name of Jesus Christ? Would we rather die holding our head up high in a generation that has rejected Jesus Christ and say, I'm going to keep on going for the cause of Christ? Or would we rather just kind of fade off into, into the backdrop? Listen, I, I love my family and I love my God and I love my church way too much to take that back seat, friend. Listen, God's done so much for us. God's been so good to us. We've got a job to do. And how we respond, it reveals who we really are. Listen, they said, they said I'm going to praise when trouble comes. I'm going to continue my mission when trouble comes. Nothing's going to deter me. I'm not going to fear the unknown. I'm not going to fear the known. I'm going to accept whatever Christ has for me. Let me give you this last thing. 1 Peter chapter number 1. Turn there. 1 Peter chapter number 1. Here's what the Bible says. <clears throat> Peter, who obviously, again, faced adversity, faced persecution, all of this. He, he too, in 1 Peter chapter number 1, verse number 1, he's writing to everybody that's scattered about. They're running for their life. They're, they're scattered because uh, the government's after them because they're uh, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. They, they have enemies. They have enemies. Things aren't going well. And he's writing to some people who are hurting, some people who are worried, some people who are troubled. And you know what? Just like we've learned in this study, just from James, how James responded, how Paul and Silas responded, how Christ responded, how, how, how that Peter now is going to respond to this church. Here's what, here's what Peter says to them. He says, and he's, he's writing verse 1 and 2, he's talking to saved people who are scattered because of their faith. Look at verse number 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Here's what he says. He says that we as children of God can respond with a confidence because no matter the power of the adversity, no matter the enormity of the situation that comes against us, no matter how strong your enemy is, how, how smooth he talks and how powerful his authority may be, there is never going to be a problem that will take your name out of the Lamb's book of life. Here's what he says. You keep fighting. You keep praising. You keep your head high. You take the high road. You don't get uh, uh, mad and, and, and lose your temper and, and you don't cuss and carry on like the world does. No, you take the high road. You live holy. You live righteous. You still sing the praises of God. Still read your Bible. Come to church when we can. Do 
everything that we can do in the name of Jesus Christ because that enemy, although he might be strong and the situation is against us, it'll never take our name out of the Lamb's Book of Life. Here's what he said. There's a place that's reserved in heaven for you, for you who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed. Here's what he says. God's power is keeping you, friend. God's power is keeping you. That old enemy can't touch you as long as God's got a hold of you. And what if he does take your life? All he can take is the breath. He cannot take your soul. That's in the hand of God. And listen, I'm thankful that I've got a heavenly place reserved for me. 26 years ago when I got saved, my name was put in the Lamb's Book of Life in heaven. There was a reservation made under the name of Jason Myers that is in heaven waiting for me. That name is not written in ink to be blotted out by man. That name's not typed into a database somewhere where a hard drive will fail and get erased. That name is written with the precious blood of the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, the Son of God himself. And there's not a devil in hell that can pull it out of that book. There's not a man alive that can erase that name. Bless God, my name is secure. Whether I go to heaven today or whether I go to heaven in a hundred years, friend, listen, that, that spot is reserved for me. And listen, that should give me hope and confidence that no matter what happens, I've always got something better to look forward to. I'm so glad, I'm so glad. There's an old hymn that said, an old song that says, I'm so glad I've got a better place to go. And I'm, I'm thankful for that. Christian, aren't you glad you got a better place to go? Aren't you glad that Jesus Christ is at the head of this thing? But friend, if you're listening and you've never been saved, you've never trusted Christ as your personal Savior, you, you have never made that reservation. And so your response to all of this is, been very different, very panicky, very troublesome. Your heart is heavy. You're worried. You're anxious for your soul. You're anxious about what might happen if you do die. My friend, listen, I'm telling you, if you'll trust the Lord Jesus Christ with all of your heart, if you'll put your faith in him, I'm telling you, he'll forgive you. The Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. The Bible says the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, shall cleanse us from all sin. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission for sin. For the wage of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. But God commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. My friend, he loves you. He wants to save you. He wants to put your name down in the Lamb's Book of Life. If you've never done that, why don't you do that now? Why don't you bow your head wherever you are and say, Jesus, I'm a sinner, and I'm asking you to be my Savior. I'm trusting you alone. Not church membership, not baptism, not good works, not confession to a priest somewhere not you know i'm trusting you that's it you hang the hat of your eternal soul on that nail of jesus christ that's it he's it he's the door he's the only one and you trust in him tonight would you pray friend let's pray father we love you today we thank you for your word we thank you that christians can respond differently to adversity we can have joy, we can have peace, we can keep on fighting, we can keep moving forward. We don't have to stop. We can keep on going. I'm thankful for that. I'm asking for your blessing today, and I'm asking that you'd speak to hearts. God, I'm asking if there's somebody here that's not saved, that they would trust you as their personal Savior. Call upon you and be saved, and I pray that your people would love you and trust you and keep on keeping on for you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We ask for your blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Friend, God is so good to us. I praise the Lord for what he's done and what he's, what he's doing and, and what he wants to do. And let's just be willing vessels of the Lord. Let's keep on going. If you know somebody uh, that could use the help, just go be a blessing to them. Go be a blessing to them. Uh, you know, just God put somebody on your heart, go minister to them. 
And that's what the body of Christ does. We just, we just help. And so uh, God bless you. I love you. I'm praying for you. I, I, I've been praying. Listen, I've given myself one of these. Brother Tony's got one of these. And Brother Matt's got one of these with all the names of our, of our church folks, members, and regular tenders. And we've been praying and, and just trying to be a help that way, praying for you. And I want you to know that we're praying for you. We love you. We know God will get us through this. Keep your head up. God bless you.